Hello students, welcome to class 12 computer science. So the chapter that we are going to begin with today is recursion. This is the part one of this particular chapter. So as per the class 12 curriculum, these are the topics that is included for the chapter recursion. In this part, we'll basically be dealing with these topics. Recursion, simple algorithm with recursion, printing MSS forever and the sum of first and natural number. So let's begin with the definition of recursion. So what is a recursion? So recursion may be defined as a process in which a function calls itself directly or indirectly. So what is it? It is a process all of us know about functions. In the previous chapter, we discussed in details about working with functions. So within a function, we can call another function. So if within one function we call another function repeatedly then it is said as recursion so what is it recursion may be defined as a process in which a function calls itself directly or indirectly what is meant by the word directly and indirectly you'll be knowing about it in the upcoming slides so the functions in which recursion is applied are called recursive functions so there may be functions in your program but those functions may be recursive function or may not be recursive functions. When will be the functions called as a recursive function? A function will be called as a recursive function only if recursion is applied to that function. That means if within one function we call the same function directly or indirectly, then only that function will be termed as a recursive function. Otherwise, we can just say that it is a general function in Python. What are the types of recursions? Let us see. There are basically two types of recursion. The first type is called direct recursion and the second type is called indirect recursion. Let's understand them one by one. So let's begin with direct recursion. So what is direct recursion? If a function calls itself directly from its function body, it is called direct recursion. If within one function, we are calling the same function, then it is called what? Then it is called a case of direct recursion. For example, here see, uh, I have defined a function, the name of the function is a, and within that function, I am calling the same function. So it falls under the category of direct recursion. Let's go to the next type of recursion, which is indirect recursion. So what is indirect recursion? If a function calls another function, which calls its caller function, it is called indirect recursion. Let's understand it with the help of an example. If a function calls another function, now here there are two functions a and b. The function one is, let's say this is the, this is one function and it is calling another function. What is the another function it is calling? It is calling the function b. So if a function calls another function, now when b will be called it will go to the function definition of b within b we are calling a that means within one function we are calling another function repeatedly but here we are not calling it directly we are calling it indirectly because from one function we are calling another function and that function is again calling the first function okay so this will come under what category this will come under indirect recursion category. It will be clear when we go to the forthcoming slides. There must be certain rules which must be kept in mind while dealing with recursion. A recursive code must be sensible with a well-defined boundary to indicate where the recursive function would stop. So recursive function should have a boundary. What is the meaning of boundary? If we, if within one function we are calling that function, then that function will never stop and if a function never stop is that code sensible that code is not sensible so we must ensure that the code stops at after certain number of steps okay so if the code stops under certain number of steps then it is said to be a sensible recursive code so we must ensure that our code is sensible a program with insensible recursive code will give the following error after reaching the recursion limit. So if we are writing an insensible recursive code, which I'll be showing it with a practical example, I'll run the code and also show, then we will get one error. 
okay when you will get an error if you are writing an insensible recursive code what is the meaning of insensible recursive code insensible recursive code means if you are writing a recursive code which never stops then it is said to be an insensible recursive code if you write an insensible recursive code after printing the message or after printing the logic which you have given within the function for some time then it will give you a runtime error like maximum recursion depth exceeded while pickling or calling a python object see a program cannot go on running for forever there is a limit to it when that limit is reached it will give you the following runtime error let's try to understand one insensible recursive code let's try to understand it so this is an example of a insensible recursive code let's see why it is called as an insensible recursive code so this is the function definition this is the function calling this is within the main function how do we know it because here the indentation is towards the extreme left so here at first which line will run at first the fifth line then it will come to the eighth line and in eighth line what is happening function calling is happening here so this function will be called so the control will go to the fifth line so here within the function definition what is there hello is there so if this is the output screen what will be printed hello will be printed once after that again function calling is happening within the function a so again control will go to the fifth line and again hello will be printed then again the function calling is happening so again hello will be printed so here what we are doing we are printing a message forever but it has a limit after the limit is reached it will give you an error a runtime error it will print the message hello for some uh, certain number of times after that you will get an error like maximum recursion depth exceeded while pickling an object in some um, interpreter the word pickling is used and in some interpreters the word calling is used but both are almost same okay let's try to run this code and see how the output comes so this is the code for printing a message forever we are calling uh, one function within it again and again so it falls under the category of insensible recursive code why it falls under the category of insensible recursive code because it is not stopping after a certain number of steps let's run this code and see what comes so when we run it see hello is printed many times i'm scrolling through it hello is printed many times and after the limit is reached you will get one error see the error is see at the bottom recursion error maximum recursion depth exceeded while calling a python object okay so if you are writing a code which never stops it is called as an insensible recursive code and you will get the following error while um, you do an insensible recursive code so this is the code which we have studied just now so when you run this code you will get the following output hello will be printed for a certain number of times after that you will get this runtime error now our aim will not be to write an insensible recursive code our aim is to write a sensible recursive code but there are two parts of a sensible recursive code we need to know about these two parts so let's begin the discussion on parts of a sensible recursive code so a sensible recursive code has two parts the first part is called the base case and the second part is called as the recursive case let's try to understand what these two means so what is a base case the case whose result is known or computed without any recursive calling is called base case so within a function there will be two cases out of those two cases first case is the base case base case is such a case which will help the program code to stop because if it does not stop it will come under insensible recursive code but we want the program to stop after some certain number of steps who will ensure that the code stops after certain number of steps this case called as the base case so its result is computed without any recursive calling and the second case is called as the recursive case the case in which a function calls itself is called a recursive case so within a recursive case 
one function will call itself repeatedly okay so within the recursive code that the same function will be called again and again and what the base case will do the base case will be executed at the end and it will help the program to stop so let's try to write a program to find out the sum of natural numbers up to n so this is the code to compute the sum of natural numbers up to n so here you i think you will know the running of this program at first the first line will be executed the name of the function is compute after the first line it will come to which line it will come to line number six then let's say this is the output screen what will be displayed in the output screen enter the number of terms till which you want to find the sum why because i've used n equals to int input you already know about the uh, working of int input okay so here let's say you have given the value of n as 4 and so now what will be stored in n 4 will be stored in n let's come to the next line in the next line what we have sum equals to compute n so here what will happen happen the function calling is happening now what is the value of n that is being carried the value of n being carried is 4 so 4 will go to the function calling within uh, so 4 will be carried to the first line so after that if n equals to equals to 1 is n 1 no n is 4 so this part will be false so it will go to the else part within the else part what is given return n plus compute n minus 1 so what is the value of n 4 4 plus compute n minus 1 n minus 1 means 4 minus 1 what is 4 minus 1 it is 3 so here see now here which is the base case which is the recursive case this is called as the base case you will know why it is called as the base case and this is called as the recursive case i think you have already guessed why this is called as a recursive case because here we are calling the same function again and again okay so this is the recursive case so here what we have 4 plus compute n minus 1 n is 4 4 minus 1 is 3 so here again the compute function will be called but this time the value of n will be how much the value of n will be carried to the first line as 3 so again it will come to the second line if n equals to equals to 1 no n is not 1 n is how much n is 3 so it will come to the else part so return n plus compute n minus 1 so n means what 3 and so this 4 is already carried okay 4 plus of this part i'm calculating now 3 plus compute n minus 1 n is how much 3 3 minus 1 is 2 so this part is stored now compute 2 so here in n what is stored now 2 if n equals to equals to 1 is n 1 no n is not 1 n is how much n is 2 so it will come to the else part in the else part what we have n plus compute n minus 1 what is n n means from this part 2 plus compute n minus 1 n minus 1 is how much 2 minus 1 is 1 so here again recursive calling is happening compute 1 so 1 will be carried to line number 1 again so after that in the line number 2 what is uh, what is being written if n equals to equals to 1 is n 1 yes n is now how much 1 so what will be returned return 1 to whom this one will be returned one will be returned to line number 5 so the value of c1 is how much 5 so ultimately what do we get as the final value we'll get as the final value as 4 plus 3 how much no sorry 4 plus 3 how much 7 7 plus 2 how much 9 9 plus 9 plus how much this is 1 it is how much 10 so 10 will be returned to line number 7 so this 10 will be stored in the variable sum so after that at the end what will be displayed sum of natural numbers from 1 to n n is how much 4 is how much 10 let's verify it so sum of natural numbers from 1 to 4 is how much 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1 4 plus 3 how much 7 7 plus 3 it is how much 10 so 10 will be displayed as the answer so it is a case of sensible recursive code why it is a case of sensible recursive code because this part this part is called as the 
recursive part because it is helping the program to run again and again and this part line number 2 and 3 is helping the program to stop so this part is known as the what case base case okay i hope you are clear so if we run it so you can give any number as the input so enter the number of time terms till which you want to find the sum if you give 6 you will get the answer as sum of natural numbers from 1 to 6 is 21 let's run this code and check out for ourselves so here so this is the code which i explained you just now so if i run this code what we'll get we'll get the output has entered the number of terms till which you want to find the sum let's give the number as 4 and just press the enter key then i'll get the answer as sum of natural numbers from 1 to 4 is 10 so you have already understood how this code is running so it is a case of sensible recursive code let's come back to the presentation so we were discussing the sum of natural numbers up to n so this is the code related to our question so here this is the output here in place of n you can give any value here i have taken 6 so i'm getting the answer as 21 because 6 plus 5 plus 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1 gives you how much gives you 21 so here line number 2 and 3 it is known as the base case because why at the end this case the line number 2 and 3 is helping the program to stop okay and this case and this part line number five is called as the recursive case why because this line within this line i'm calling the function compute again and again okay i hope these parts are clear so this is the curriculum out of the entire curriculum i have discussed this to these topics in the part one in the second part i'll be dealing with the other topics Okay, thank you very much. I hope that this session was useful.